Well, hello again, everyone, to another episode of the Lost in Space uh, One-Eyed Monster uh, kit. It's the 5032 um, that I've been working on. Um, I've been working on the One-Eyed Monster. I uh, wanted to make him a little bit more realistic. And so, as you can see in front of you, uh, these are some of the tools I use to uh, create, uh, create that effect. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, one thing I didn't, well, one thing uh, I did do was uh, to go ahead and use this uh, sterile self-adhesive uh, ace bandage wrap because uh, it's sticky on the one side. So uh, I actually, this is just an example one here. I used a smaller roll uh, to actually wrap around his legs to give it some texture and some uh, overlay to make it look like uh, you know fur around his legs. So uh, this is just an example of what I actually used, uh, like I said, for his legs. Um, so that's the first thing I did uh, and applied that to him. The next thing that I uh, did uh, for the rest of his body um, was to actually use some cotton balls. Um, basically, as you can see right here, uh, I had a lot of the cotton balls, so I, I decided to go with that because it does have a kind of a fur or hair effect when uh, uh, I spread it around. And then, in order for me to do that, I just took a little piece at a time, like this one here, and then I just kind of unwrapped it and then just kind of spread it out, as you can see here, to real thin. And uh, until I got the uh, right consistency of uh, of what would simulate as as hair, and then once I was uh, satisfied with that, let me bring the light over a little bit here. Once I was satisfied with that, uh, I went ahead and applied some of the <coughs> uh, canopy glue uh, with a paintbrush, and actually I just kind of paintbrushed the glue. Uh, on each section of his body and uh, and then I went ahead and applied the uh, uh, spread out uh, cotton across the uh, framework of his uh, like I said of his body and I just kind of worked a little bit at a time with that so that was the procedure I did for the cotton balls um, as far as his around his face for his you know his beard and his hair you know on his head um, I decided to go I know it kind of looks a little nasty but I actually went out to my dryer and uh, pulled out some lint and uh, so uh, I decided to uh, use that for you know like I said for his uh, for his beard and facial features around his face so uh, same thing. Uh, basically, I just kind of uh, spread it out with my fingers till I got the right look to it. And uh, again, I then applied it with the uh, canopy glue with some brush first, and then just kind of pasted it on his face and let that cure uh, overnight. Um, so that was my uh, special effects as far as trying to uh, make it a little bit more realistic than just to go ahead and spray on the. Uh, paint on the actual plastic part of his body so um, <clears throat> as far uh, once that was done uh, and uh, the glue set in place and the then the like I said the uh, cotton feature and everything was was set uh, I went ahead then and used my Pache airbrush to actually uh, spray on um, some paint uh, and of course, again, I used some of the acrylic paint, and uh, as you can see here, as far as his uh, the body parts, uh, I used a combination of uh, Craft Smart Brown and some Folk Art Dark Brown to kind of give it a two tone feature. Um, so that was what I used for uh, ninety percent of his body there. Um, I didn't put anything on his around his uh, face as far as where the lint went because I just went with the natural color of the lint to do that part. But since the cotton was white, I wanted to uh, uh, simulate the what you see on the cover art as best as I could. Um, as far as his face, 
uh, itself. Uh, I went ahead and used uh, some brown for a space, and then I used some uh, folk art tangerine. I used a toothpick to actually uh, place it where his freckles would go. So uh, that's what I did for that. And then, of course, around his uh, his eye himself, uh, the sclera part, I used some of the folk art warm white. And uh, and then for the uh, for the eye itself, I used uh, the pupil. Uh, I used the satin. And then I just kind of highlight with a little dot of uh, some white there, kind of give it like a little reflection in the eye. Uh, once that was all done, uh, as far as around the eyes and the face and nose, um, I went ahead and put some clear coat on that to protect it. And, uh, and uh, I was pretty well satisfied with it. As far as his, as his uh, claws on his uh, feet and his hands, uh, I actually took the uh, brown and a little bit of some white and made it kind of like a light tan color and uh, applied that to his, uh, like I said, his claws and his, uh, on both his uh, feet and hands. So with that being said, let's take a look and see what this guy looks like. And let me move this out of the way. And uh, <clears throat> move that up a little bit. All right, so here he is, the uh, one-eyed monster. Um, as you can see, I also went ahead and glued in place the uh, the uh, boulder that he was going to throw at the Robinsons family. But uh, like I said, hopefully uh, this is in focus for you. But uh, yeah, here he is, uh, all done up. And uh, as you can see, uh, I think it came out pretty good. So so I I'm pleased with it. But uh, there he is. There. Take a look at this. Get my fat fingers all the way here. But uh, yeah. There he is. Let's turn him around a little bit. See the back end of it. And uh, like I said, with the cotton and everything, uh, it kind of flares out a little bit, just like you know normal hair would. So uh, it's not all compressed down and looking you know neat and everything. So it's and. Uh, there's the back side of his head there with the uh, lint. Uh, you know, of course, the lint that I pulled out uh, has a little bit of that dark kind of maroon and purple color, kind of reminiscent of some of the uh, uniforms that the Robinson family uh, was wearing at the time. So, but uh, <clears throat> there he is. Uh, now I didn't, I didn't put any uh, clear coat or spray any clear coat like a mist yet. Uh, to hold the cotton in place. It still has that nice soft feature to it and I may just go ahead and just leave it alone like that uh, just to kind of make it look like the hair is loose and flowing a little bit. So, uh, but uh, there he is. So, uh, <clears throat> I kind of set him off to the side here or right up against the box. Alright, so uh, next up, uh, give me a few minutes here and uh, uh, I'll show you what I've been doing with the uh, diorama. So uh, hang tight and we'll be right back. And we're back. And as you can see in front of you is the uh, diorama feature that I've been working on. And uh, I got her all painted up. And uh, I actually laid down some uh, dirt on the soil of the uh, so-called planet that they were on. Um, I went ahead and, uh, like I said, uh, uh, sprayed it first with some uh, a primer, and uh, then I went ahead and used some of the uh, dark brown paint as uh, well as some of the satin black for some of the shadows lines for pre-shading, and uh, then I went ahead and uh, took some brown and some white and made a light tan color, and I actually dry brushed around the outer edges where the sun would be hitting uh, the perimeter of the uh, of the uh, boulders and the rocks themselves. Um, I don't know if you can see but uh, you know there is some <clears throat> there is some lettering here you know on the 
top part of the boulder, which, you know, of course says lost in space. But uh, I might just choose to, you know, uh, kind of let that kind of camouflage into the rock itself uh, and not stand out so much. Um, as far as the uh, the base, flat base part of it, uh, I actually use some of my uh, Cinerama uh, desert uh, uh, theme. Uh, here's an example of it here. And what I actually ended up doing was actually uh, cutting some strips uh, so I can work with it. And uh, I actually watered it down and uh, with a little, little sponge stick that you see here. Uh, once it was all wet and I let set for about a minute or two, I just flipped this over and I scraped the top cover off. So actually it's basically sand and I scraped that off of the, the, uh, the backing, uh, put it in a cup, and then I went ahead and spread it all over the flat base once I applied some of the uh, uh, Cinerama project glue. And of course I brushed that on with the paintbrush and then like I said I sprinkled down the uh, uh, the sand uh, all over the, uh, the base coat. Now as far as the uh, different color there, uh, you, you see it's kind of like a kind of purplish color. Again, I uh, had some leftover tile grout and uh, so that's what I used there. Uh, you know, it's nice fine powder and I just went, went in there and just took a couple pinches and just kind of sprinkled it in various areas and uh, so this is what we came up with. Uh, once that was done, I actually took a spray bottle, as you can see here, and I actually poured some of the project glue in it, mixed it with some water, shook it up, and then I went ahead and squirted it and sprayed all over the uh, base there to bind the uh, the sand and the dirt all together so it, it would stick on and stay on the uh, base itself. So. Uh, like I say, there you have it. That's the uh, that's the base I've been working on, and uh, so we're kind of moving right along. So uh, until then, uh, that's it for right now. Hope everybody has a good day, and uh, we'll catch you on the next uh, episode where I should have some more of this uh, put together. Uh, and yes, I'm still working on the uh, chariot itself and waiting on the decals. So uh, right now we'll get the main. Uh, part of this build uh, done and uh, and like I said until then we'll uh, catch y'all later have a good day and uh, until next time bye